Can you hear me, Trevor? Yep, loud and clear. Great, thank you. Do we do we have new members on the committee? I believe we do. Uh, yeah, Bethany Rose, right? Congratulations and welcome to the Shutesbury School Committee. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight too. All right. So it looks like uh, we have a quorum. I think more people are going to be joining us. Um, Lauren, do you mind if I share the meeting with you? Can we do that again? Okay. Um, Okay, so Lauren, hopefully you're co-host now. So you can try to admit people in if you see them, okay? Thank you very much. All right, Trevor, so it is 7.06. We'll start the meeting, it's being recorded. Um, thank you for your patience. Uh, obviously there's been a lot of activity going on with um, changes from in-person back to allowing us to do Zoom, I think until April of 2022. Uh, this gives people the ability to be here um, from all over. So um, because we do have a new member joining us on the school committee, perhaps uh, we can at least go through a round and introduce uh, ourselves from the school committee so everybody knows who we are. Uh, maybe Jackie, you can introduce yourself too, and Bruce, um, and Trevor. So um, my name is Dan Hayes. I'm the chair of the Shrewsbury School Committee. Bethany? My name is Lauren thomas Paquin, and I am a member of the committee. Jen Malcolm-Brown on the committee. Thank you. Steve Sullivan. I know, Bethany. I know Bethany, but I'm Jackie. I'm the principal. I'm Trevor Kearns. I just take the minutes. I'm Bruce Turner. I'm the director of finance and operations for uh, Irving Union 28. So. Okay. And I know Jennifer was on her way. She, you, can you see her? Is she on yet? No. Okay. Um, it's hard for me to see everybody on the screen, uh, so I apologize for that. And Trevor, you don't only just take minutes. You do a lot with those minutes, so thank you. I had the same reaction, Dan. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> All right. And Dan, um, do you want Bethany to introduce herself? Yes, please, Bethany. Hi, I am uh, Bethany Rose, um, and I have... Uh, one son, Jake, who is, well, he just finished first grade today. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. And thank you for uh, joining us on the committee. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Right. So first item is public hearings. This is an opportunity for people to share their thoughts or feelings. Okay, Corinne. Sorry, I had to unmute. So I, I sent out this at the very last minute today because it was such a scramble. So I didn't know if it would benefit just to have me read it um, so that it could be, uh, I just would like to read it, but I think you all, I emailed a copy to everybody as well. I think Victoria did. Okay, um, so that would be wonderful if you read it because if you did send it, I didn't get it or I didn't read it or I don't know where it is yet. I'll look for it oh, later. Oh, totally. It was very last minute, yes. Um, so we have currently we have an architect, Laura Fitch of Fitch Architecture and Community Design, conducting a thorough code review on the proposed change in occupancy. She's been communi in communication with Jim Hawkins, and he's given his initial feedback, and she's working to address his questions. Mr. Hawkins has yet to see her latest draft. She expects to send it to him soon. She's already confirmed that the building is appropriate for the proposed educational use group, as long as we can show load calculations and a few other items. So um, 
that was one point that we wanted to bring up. Um, and then the buildings have been inspected for emergency egress, handicapped access, emergency lighting, smoke detectors, and certified fire extinguishers. So um, we wanted to make sure that we said that. And then we were requesting that the school committee could grant approval um, to become a private elementary school contingent on the receipt of those changes in occupancy. If that could happen, and then we check back in and in August, and then we can get the work done in the meantime. And then if we don't have it done, it would be contingent upon that to be a school for the fall. Um, and then if it's not possible to grant approval on a contingency basis, we would request that the school committee um, possibly put us on the agenda with a vote for an August meeting, if we could hold one, when we are expect to be able to present a certificate of occupancy with the change in use. Okay. Is there anyone else with public hearings? And Lauren, can you see any other hands or anything that I can't? Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is a review of the agenda and perpetual calendar. Um, I don't really see anything on there. All right. And, and Corinne, just so you understand the process, what we're gonna do is go through the agenda. We generally don't respond during public hearings. Public hearings is an opportunity for us to hear. Um, oftentimes it's hard to respond because we don't have all of the information, but uh, certainly um, you're, we've heard what you had to say and we appreciate your, your thoughts. Um, I believe we do have the more so up, as an update. So it's something we may be talking a little bit more about later in the agenda. So thank you. All right, um, warrants and gifts. I have two warrants, I believe. I have warrant number 3027, dated 6121, in the amount of $27,110.58. And I have payroll warrant number 325, dated June 14th, 2021, in the amount of $79,675.90. Okay. And Trevor, you probably have already those numbers and stuff too. Yeah. Dan, may yeah. I add a, a couple more to the, that? Certainly. Um, because we just sent them over to the town hall, Steve. I have number 326. Uh, it's dated the 28th of um, June for $81,870.30. And I have warrant number 3028, which is dated the 15th of June for $17,106.65. So that will. That's the last payroll of the year, and uh, we probably have one or two more tender warrants. So. Great. So the record will show that those warrants have been submitted. Yeah, and Trevor has that information. So, great. Thank you. All right, we're looking for a motion to approve the minutes from May twentieth, twenty twenty one. So moved. And second. second. All right. Were there any? Uh, amendments or changes to the minutes. Okay. Um, and Bethany, you can feel free to vote on the minutes, even if you weren't here. It's just a way of us making sure that um, it is put into the record. Okay, so you can feel comfortable to vote however you'd like. Yes, no, or abstain if you choose. So all of those in favor of the minutes? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, any opposed? I don't think so, and no abstentions. Okay, thank you. All right, unfinished business, capital projects. Bruce, do you have anything to talk about capital projects? Yep, yep. so uh, fruitful town meeting. The uh, town approved um, spending for the roof. The town approved engineering and um, financing or payment of 
upgrading our heat system, our um, controls for the heat system. Uh, the sliders, I talked with Bob Groves. Uh, he's in the process of ordering them and getting them delivered because the, the price fluctuations, he can get them for the same price he had quoted. And then once we get here, we'll see um, if we can find a contractor to install them. Right now there's lead times and difficulty finding contractors. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, thank you all the members of Shootsbury and all those that attended town meeting because um, this is going to be very, uh, very helpful for that school. So I'm sure Jackie will <laughs> concur, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll just add that that was the gym roof and not the whole roof. Yes. And, and the other thing is that with the sliders, I contacted the assistant um, physical plant person at the Amherst region, and he said that the doors have no issues as far as codes go because they're existing. We don't have to worry about any kind of um, fire doors or any of that type of thing, they're good to go as they are. Great. Also, um, Bruce and Jackie, I really appreciated your comments at town meeting and being able to explain things. So thank you very much for being prepared and, uh, and for speaking up and for speaking well on the projects that are, that are mm -hmm. pending. Okay. And Anything else on capital projects? On, so everybody's aware we did submit our MSBA application timely. So we'll wait and see what happens there. So Great. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. Thank you for helping us. So. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, so the next item on the agenda was the Morse Hill School update. Dan, Susie had her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I just wanted to know, um, I've forgotten what's in the application for the grant. <clears throat> I know it's the second part of the roof, and was there something else? Um, the boilers. Oh, yeah. If we can get money to fix them, we'll repair them now. Otherwise, there's still a work, good working order. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm So thank you, Jen, for pointing that out. And sorry, Susie, I, again, I don't see everyone on my screen, so I didn't even see you. So if anyone does have a hand or would like to say something, maybe also to speak if I don't call on you um, or Lauren and I don't see you, just so, so we can be aware. Um, so the Morse Hill School update, I did put it on the agenda because there's been some communication. Uh, I believe everyone has been sort of in that loop of communication. Um, and at this point, uh, what we would need is just for the criteria. And I think you're aware of what the criteria is. Um, I believe it was the certificate of occupancy, the fire inspection, safety inspections, all those things. Um, I had been in contact with Jim Hawkins, who is the building inspector for Franklin County. Um, so the last I spoke with him, which was, I believe, before one of our last communications, um, there hadn't been any reach out to him at that point. So we are just waiting for the certifications and certificates to come to us. So when you get those, I would say get them to either me or the committee. I will certainly share that information. Um, when we get that, we would certainly be more than willing to see if we can uh, reconvene as a committee to address your request. Okay. Do we have any questions or thoughts? I could just say as somebody, as the architect who's um, just recently started helping them with this is that I have written to Jim Hawkins and we've just been emailing back and forth, but um, haven't yet um, been able to uh, haven't finished uh, the the code review which I am conducting, and um, probably will be sharing it with him within a week. So, great, thank you. That is. And 
I'm wondering um, if there are any other issues besides the change in occupancy that we should be aware of. So I believe you have the same list that's provided for, yeah, I think things such as um, some of that you don't need, but uh, communication, I believe uh, there needs to be some sort of a, a phone system. Yeah, we, Do you we, need... have, we have a phone system, but yeah. Right. I think that's oh. just a requirement. And, and a lot of this. Are you looking for um, something that proves that we have phone service? I'm phone system. So in my conversations with Jim Hawkins, there were some things that he was talking about that you would need as a requirement for a school. Um, one of the things he did mention was, I believe, a phone system, like a communication system. So again, I'm not the one to really ask these questions to. It really would be Jim Hawkins. He really has guidelines of what you need. Um, and I, I don't. I completely understand that, Mike. Our question is besides the the reason re do of that, are there any other parts of the curriculum or anything else we submitted that you would like us to adjust or address? Mm -hmm. I'll answer that and then Stephen, if you wanna come in too. So I know we have already done a preliminary review of um, the curriculum. Uh, Jackie, I think you were a part of that as well. Um, I think that all seem to be okay. We don't have an issue there. I think the main uh, the, the main point or the next step is really just to make sure that um, the building inspector basically signs off on the, the requirements that have been met. And again, I don't know what those requirements are. Yes, we do. With with Laura's help, we are we are doing that. Yes. Excellent. That's wonderful. And he seems to be a, a very pleasant person to work with. I'm not sure what your experience has been with him, but uh, he seemed to be responsive when I when I had reached out to him in phone calls and, and emails. So um, if you have any problems, you can convey that to me, but I, I seem to find them pretty easy to work with. No, he's, we've been responding with him. And I, when I told you we had been talking to the building inspector, I spoke in error. It wasn't Jim Hawkins. I believe it was his, someone who works with him or his assistant who had come out. So when I told you we had already spoken to Jim Hawkins, I had just gotten the name of the person in the building inspection department wrong that we spoke to. So I do apologize about that. That's okay. And again, you know, we all talked to different people. I didn't think that I, it's not a worries. Not a worry. Okay, Steve, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was just gonna say that in, it's, you know, we, the school committee, we trust the principal and the superintendent and they both gave you a thumbs up on the philosophy. So that that's all fine. Yeah, it's just the, it's the physical, not the, not the philosophy. Okay. Dan, do you see April? I don't. <laughs> I'm over here. Hi, I, I just wanted to talk as a, as a member of the board of this school, and I think part of um, what makes this so challenging is I don't think there's another school like this in the state. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything like this in New England, so it's a really, really unique concept. Um, and so I think getting the nuts and bolts, you know, what normally would be pretty pro forma in approving a school site, um, this, this becomes more complicated. And I really appreciate people's willingness to, to, to work on this and to, um, to, to see this through. But it is a unique um, way to educate. I agree. And I think uh, everyone learns differently. So it is an opportunity. So thank you. Um, I, I'll... Yep, Victoria, go ahead. Um, We're pretty informal here. It's okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, I have been in contact with um, a couple of, one is a school and one is actually Project Adventure who have used yurts for their, um, well, one is a Montessori school. So, and then um, Project Adventure uses it for their educational programs and um, learned of the processes that they have gone through. So there are other people that have done that 
um, with yurts specifically. So um, I don't know if that information um, could be helpful. Um, I also talked to the person at Project Adventure who um, headed up the uh, getting all the regulations in line for the yurt and he said there are many organizations throughout the state that do use yurts um, for um, buildings that they you know bring groups in to for educational purposes so mm -hmm. um, so there is a precedent yeah and victoria i think that would be information that you would want to share with jim okay. you know i know for example at our own elementary school with covid we put up tents the tents were not flyer retarded retarded and they had to be removed so I don't even know if we did end up getting new tents that were, but because it's a school, we have certain things that we need to sort of adhere to. So I don't think the problem was so much for us not having uh, having a tent. The problem was that it hadn't conformed to what they needed to, which was having you know, flame retardant. So, and that and is. And sorry. I'm sorry, those are the things, you know, we didn't know, you know, you sort of learn along the way. Um, but, you know, I'm just using that as an example of, you know, having that information and sharing that information with Jim would be good because then it helps maybe him to understand, uh, you know, again, I don't know, I don't know really how all the regulations work, but and yeah. Just oh. as a piece of information, that is one of the pieces that I already have confirmed having to do with the fire rating of both the exterior and the interior lining of the, the yurt. Great, thank you. All right, are there any other hands up? All right. Nope. Well, we are gonna move on to new business. I do appreciate all of you coming. Um, I'm sorry that uh, I had to keep re-communicating information I did want to make sure that all of you knew when our meeting was. Um, I actually lost sleep last night because I wasn't sure. I thought, well, maybe I should have emailed earlier, but I kept waiting for uh, changes in, in, in the state legislature. And I kept being assured that we would know, you know last night and then we didn't know last night. So I sent that email out at 517 this morning and then it, 1136 found out that the governor signed it. So um, I appreciate the fact that you're all been uh, patient with me. Uh, my whole point was to really make sure that everybody had an opportunity to be a part of this process and to express your thoughts. So I appreciate it. Dan, I think it's a very fitting ending to this year that there was, <laughs> there was about a lot of last minute communication. So uh, you got to laugh about it a little bit. To use our COVID word, we were nimble. <laughs> so I thank you all. And uh, just one last um, thing is, uh, and so in order to, um, we just contact you to uh, get on the agenda for a meeting this summer. You can contact me um, or uh, any of us, uh, just in case you know you don't have my email or I don't respond. I mean, I'm usually good about always checking my emails, even if I'm away. Um, but we will do everything in our power to accommodate your request. Um, quorum, meaning, you know, meeting a quorum. Okay. okay. And I, I just want to thank you for hearing us and, and letting us talk and being open to it because we really want to partner with the community and the Shoes Valley Elementary School both. We don't want to take from, we want to enhance and work together. Um, and I think this could be a really beautiful opportunity if we can figure out how to make it happen. Um, so I just wanna say thank you for hearing us. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you for coming. All right, so you guys can all feel free to leave. You can certainly stay. We have a really exciting meeting, um, but we'll move on, so thank you. All right, new business. Uh, Shrewsbury School Committee and Seesaw Settlement Agreement, discussion and possible vote. So we probably will move that to the executive session and then come back into open public session to vote on it. Is that sort of the plan, Jennifer? Yes, it is. All right. So maybe we'll go through 
the rest of the agenda and come back to that so that this way um, people who are very interested in policies and reports can listen to that. And then we will uh, adjourn uh, to go into executive session and then come back into open public session to vote on it. Okay, so we're gonna move that to a little bit later. Thank you. So reports, superintendent's report. Yep, good evening. Um, as Jackie said, it's it's um, been a long year and this will we or won't we have remote meetings? Um, I, I've never checked my email with such glee and abandon as I will they, won't they, will I hear? Um, so I'm glad that the governor passed um, and signed into law the ability to have remote meetings, um, especially for us in Western Mass. I really do feel like it encourages more participation. Um, so that was good news. Um, on what day is today? Wednesday. On Monday, I brought <laughs> I brought our new director of student support services, uh, Karina Wislow, on a grand tour of a grand whirlwind tour of Union 28 because we started at noon when she was free. She got to see Principal Mendonza handing out bento boxes at field day. She saw her new office, which is located at Shutesbury Elementary. She loved everything but the wall color that Prudy picked out. <laughs> um, as we know, Prudy is unique. And um, I think Karina thought the wall color was slightly bright, but all, all is good. Um, she's looking forward to being at Shutesbury. And I introduced her to the most important person, Chef Gail. <laughs> and told her all about the lunches. So she's super excited. I said, she'll probably never have to pack a lunch again. Um, and we toured uh, Leverett Elementary, we toured Irving and we ended up at Shutesbury. I mean, at Swift River, she missed um, um, Ollie, the comfort dog who spent some time at Swift River and River the duck who thinks she's a dog um, and Rose that she did meet Rose the duck. The goats and the chickens were not there. Um, so she got sort of the full view of what Union 28 entails. Um, so I'm looking forward to her starting. She begins on July 1. I think she will be a wonderful addition um, to the leadership team. We had our final COVID, post-COVID leadership team meeting today. I'm looking forward to a return, although I love meeting bi-weekly or twice weekly with my leadership team, um, but I'm looking forward to regular old leadership team meetings that are in person. Um, and again, I, I probably say it at every meeting, but I'm super thankful for the leadership team. I think we have done an amazing job of navigating um, the global pandemic and all of the repercussions in our elementary schools. Uh, we have amazing principals. I know you all know that, but I'm just gonna keep repeating that. Um, couldn't have done it without them. They're super, super awesome. Um, we had a meeting with Commissioner Riley today. Uh, it's our last commissioner meeting for a while, so he says. Um, and basically the gist of it was Masks um, are required through the end of the school year. Um, summer school, it's optional, um, especially if summer school occurs outside. And as it stands now, there will be no mask mandates in the fall. But you know, as we know, things change uh, quickly, but that's what it's looking like. Um, and this is all because Massachusetts is stepping down um, off emergency orders. Um, he talked a little bit about high quality curriculum and they'll be, um, Jesse will be collecting information relative to the curriculums we use um, and then compiling a list of high quality curriculums. I think Union 28 will be right on the top of that list. We do an amazing job with our students. Um, and I think that's about it as we wrap up the year and hopefully start a little more normal school year next year um, and looking forward to sort of processing through this year what lessons did we learn and what do we want to bring forward and um, I think that will inform our practices so that's my report for this evening. Dan? 
what color is the wall? Um, so <laughs> it's sort of spring green meets the color of Irish clovers meets a little bit of 80s neon. <laughs> Did I get it right, Jackie? Yep, yeah. pretty accurate. And Karina was more like, um, maybe pale blue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Any yeah. questions for Jennifer? All right. Thank you. Just appreciation, and I hope you get a nap soon after the year you've had. I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> Reading something that's not guidance from Desi, um, yes. and maybe even my Secret Shame People magazine. Um, and just hanging out by the pool and not thinking about PPEs or um, outdoor tents or DESI guidance for just a wee bit would be wonderful. Yes. Jennifer, are the okay. other schools done too? Swift River has uh, one more day. We had a no power day in New Salem and Wendell, so they'll be finished tomorrow. So you are really close to to slowing things down <laughs> for you. All right, thank you very much. Director of Finance and Operations, Bruce. So thank everybody for town meeting. We got our budget passed um, without too much issue. So that was good. Uh, the other thing is I'm working with Matt to, to get some air conditioning in the um, offices where uh, Karina and uh, Ten Spofford are. Plus, we're looking at air conditioning the library. So, if we have summer programs, we can keep that area cool. So, I'm hoping well, to get also, another. The important thing is the server room. Yeah, the server room. I forget. Yeah, <laughs> that's the real important thing. That's the that's the motivation behind the whole thing. Right now, we have a a portable air conditioner that I think we replaced like every year or every other year. So this should be a better uh, better um, condition for that, that room, so. And I don't have any transfers for tonight. Everything looks good. We didn't have a lot of programs that run that may cost us, so. And the food service is doing really well, so. We're looking really good this year. Great. So Bruce, I have a question. I know um, sort of when we were talking about the heating system, um, we were also, there was some discussion about a whole school ventilation system and whether that would be something covered through a CARES Act or something that, do you remember that conversation? Or well, where the... our, our school now has a whole school ventilation system. In, in the fall, we did um, a lot of work to make sure we were getting proper air turns per hour in all of the rooms. So there is <clears throat> there is air movement there. I know Becky talked about uh, putting AC in the whole building. I don't see that as a, uh, something on, on my view right now, but it's something she's got on her radar. And, um, you know, the town's getting a ton of CARES money and not cares money, us or money. And, uh, Dan, did you mean the controls or do you mean the system? No, there was some talk and I thought it came from Jamrog about like <laughs> more with the whole ventilation system. But I didn't know what ever came of that. Well, there's no doubt that there's always stuff that we're dealing with every year on that. Like the flow is off. You know, at least Jamrock tells us all the time that it's like we have good per hour exchanges, but in terms of like valves shutting off or heat places and like we do have rooms that go without heat and then we're like, why is it freezing in here? And there, you know, there's like a lot of that type of thing. Um, right. This had something to do with the, the to making it more energy efficient by doing something with the air? <clears throat> I think that, Dan, that's all part of the controls plan. That's part of the controls plan, okay. Yeah, because as the valves turn on, then you need more airflow and there's there's a lot, lot of 
interconnectivity here. And that's what we're looking to do with our new control system. And, uh, and hopefully we can get something that uh, basically Matt or whoever can control from an iPhone at their home if they want to make adjustments. And, you know, the, the, the issue that I have, and it's very concerning to me, is as we have a cold weekend, um, somebody right now has to come in and make sure that the, the heat's on at the building. And this way here, you'll be able to see that we have, um, the room temperatures are fine remotely. So there's a lot of, a lot of, things going on here, but uh, thankfully the town was generous enough to uh, provide us with some money to do it. So I'm, and, and all, all, when all said and done, we should actually end up saving money because, you know, it's, it's heating and doing everything it's supposed to properly. Great. Susie? I do remember Bob talking about some other project that would be whole building. And um, I think that um, I don't, I, I'll look through my notes and see, um, I don't believe it ever got replaced with the notion of just fixing the controls. I know that everybody knows the controls need to be fixed, um, and whether that will provide an adequate solution overall, but Bob did talk about something in the whole building, but that was pretty unfleshed out as a, as a concept. Yeah. yeah I, my short term memory right now is like... <laughs> <laughs> not awesome so um i i i can't my memory can't pull that up right now right okay. no worries i i just remembered it and i was like whatever happened to that because i thought it was like we were it was a recommendation and if it was a recommendation and it could be covered under the cares act or some extra money or whatever like would we pursue that but i don't remember anything either so <clears throat> sorry and then, um, and I, I think just for clarification, the Wi-Fi that went outside, did we use grant money for that? Mm -hmm. that? I think we ended up using some grant money. For we that. used some grant money, but the town wanted to give us some money for that too. I think it was a shared, yeah. a shared. Okay. Yeah. And that would have been town grant money also. Yeah. So. And, and, it, and it, it really was not that much money when all was said and done. And it was and, very, very helpful and, and still and will helpful. continue to be. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. And we have nothing to transfer. So any questions for Bruce? Well, I, I guess I want, um, is this the point at which you would know whether there's going to be money coming back to the town from unspent funds? <coughs> We're planning to have some money come back to the town. Um, Jackie and I are <laughs> trying to get we together so we can talk about yet. We don't know a final number yet, but there no. should be something that comes back. Right. There'll be some money coming back for sure. Yeah. Well, that said, I will say, Susie, that I think it's a wonderful relationship that the school has with the finance committee. And um, I think the town has worked out a really good system that provides for overall efficiency for uh, taxpayers that money is used wisely and when money uh, is not needed it comes back to the town and for the finance committee to recognize that our budget is really based on like a zero based budgeting practice where we have a school with overarching uh, expenses and including one teacher for each class and, and those sorts of things and that we don't actually pad the budget with a lot of extra money you know, that something happens like a boiler goes. Um, some school districts are really held tightly accountable for that. And I think it's nice to have the flexibility and the working relationship that we do, so. And that's the way the town budget works too. Um, so we're in sync with that. I, I'm going to propose to this FinCom that we work on understanding school choice money better and there's other there's other um, laws that apply to funding schools there's other requirements so we're gonna I'm gonna propose we make a subcommittee and and work on that and um, as we get information together there'll be a time where we send it over to the school and the school figures out <clears throat> how these how this information impacts what they want to do 
So it will be a, a joint effort also, but um, I need our subcommittee to do the legwork <clears throat> because there's really actually quite a few different things about funding and uh, we need to understand them instead of just having this uh, sort of back and forth argument. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else for Bruce? All right. Principal's report. Um, hi, I'm just going to keep it pretty short and sweet. Um, we had a lot of our and we tried to do a lot of our end of the year uh, tradition type things. We had a bring your own spaghetti dinner for the sixth graders. Um, we did have field day in the rain. That was something. Um, a lot of kids seemed to like it. A lot of staff, not so much, but they were troopers. And they did it for the kids. And I think it'll be one of, the, one of the field days they'll always remember being completely soaked. But we did send a reminder and almost everyone came with a change of clothes. So it was a dry afternoon and a very wet morning. Um, we had a sixth grade movie night. We had a graduation parade yesterday and we had our um, graduation last night. That was really lovely. Um, in we have a summer school program happening for about 30 students uh, this summer, and we are not having students wear masks outside. So if they're inside learning, they'll be wearing masks, but if they are outside learning, they are not going to be wearing masks. Uh, and that goes for the teachers as well. Um, if they want to, they can, but it's not going to be a requirement. Um, and then I do just want to make sure I recognize three of teacher three staff members at our school that are retiring this year. Um, the first one is Andrea Darby, who is a special education student support teacher who has been at the school for decades. Same thing with Jan Tyner, who is a, who is a, a student support teacher who has been at the school for decades. Um, and then Rob Rice is retiring from the kitchen who is Chef Gale's number one support. So we have three staff members retiring um, that have, uh, dedicated a whole lot of time and care and talent to our school. And I just wanted to recognize them here. Um, and that's that's really all I have to uh, report on right now. Thank you for bringing that uh, up again. I know I did read about that, the retirements and uh, they're gonna be missed. So thank you. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of change. <laughs> But while you're on, Jackie, I guess I kind of want to bring up something that Susie alluded to, which was also brought up at town meeting, which is really the school choice funds. And I'm just going to ask if maybe we should be thinking, meaning maybe you and working with Jennifer and Bruce, about if there's you know thoughts about how to use that school money as it continues to accumulate. Um, I know uh, we want to be cognizant not to, you know, take away from, from the budget. We don't want to be in a situation where uh, like Leverett and Pelham and other school districts have relied on school choice money. And then suddenly when that money is not there, the budget is impacted and quality of education can be impacted. Programs can be impacted. So, you know, I'm wondering- yeah, I mean, I I'm certainly happy to think about that and look at that. I do think that how we're using it this year might be something how we wanna continue using it where when I see a need in the school, a short-term need, for example, our we're high, we, we're, next year we have a one-year intervention teacher to help us in our recovery. Um, if there's a year that we need two preschools to be able to offer preschools for everyone in the, in the town, that type of thing where it's not a, consistent staff member. I mean, because let's be honest, the biggest, our biggest funding is our staff members at our school. I mean, we have very small lines everywhere else. So um, instead of, in, instead of, you know, putting a teacher on school choice money, which is scary to me in a small school, I really like the idea of using it with, you know, a lot of data towards why we're doing it. Um, to for these short term boosts to the school and to the kids that it's really needed. Like this teacher we hired for one year is gonna make a big difference. 
um, in, in the lives of kids and in our building to be able to give us this academic help with this academic boost. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, you know, I could talk for hours about the importance of early childhood education. Um, and I think there's about 1 billion reports that talk about the need to educate students at three years old um, and their success in life from that. And so as a little, um, a little, a little town with a lot of houses selling and a lot of people with young children coming in, that might also be something that we examine if we want to make ensure that um, our school is, is a full service community school. Yes, Lauren. I just wanted to say that um, that when we made the shift, there's a lot more money because we made the shift to having the teachers um, children be school choice, which which thankfully they agreed to. Um, and I think I know that we did say that at town meeting, but I think it's really important that community members understand that because because I know, Jackie, you don't really take in very many students. And I and I I was concerned that maybe some of the community thought that our philosophy around that had changed and it really hasn't. There's a larger number, but that's because of the yes. The staff, staff chooses to send their kids to the school, which no, and they always did. They just weren't counted as school choice, mm -hmm. right? So we didn't get money for them, right? In that way, um, and I, I, I think too that that's another reason why you know we have we don't have a lot of staff turnover, thankfully, um, as Andrea and Jan Tyner are good examples of. Um, so you know when some of these teachers, when their students age out we won't have that money anymore. It, you know, I mean, the school choice is always um, in flux anyway, but uh, if we were, if we took out the teachers, uh, students or teachers, children, we don't have that many other students. So we just have to also remember that our, uh, yeah. the number is bigger right now and, and won't stay that way. And I could always, um... Oh, I don't know if it's appropriate. I, I feel like I could always tell this, I could have let the school committee know how many of the school choice students are staff based. Do you know what I mean? Like there could be a way I let you know that. So that like if we like right now, I think we have like 20 something, 20 something um, school choice students. We're like very close to half of them are teacher students, right? Yeah, so I like, think Jackie giving a percentage update, you know, yeah would yeah, then that not, we wouldn't be giving an exact number so people wouldn't try to figure out, but we could give a percentage out of 26 students, you know, 28% are staff children. And that would give the community sort of a perspective on um, yeah. and where I, our school choice money is coming from. And I just wanna say, you know, it's just like testing when you like, like standardized testing, when you're dealing with a very small pool very slight changes affect big time the results. So for example, we have a school choice family with three students that is, that are, that's moving to a different part of the state. That's three kids already gone next year. You know what I mean? We have a, we have a staff member that's pulling her two children to be in their community school so that when they go to middle school, they have friends in their community. Like that's now five people already gone from our school choice. So it's like our numbers can fluctuate very fast um because of life decisions that people are making so um i think it's really important for people to keep in their mind like like two kids is a lot in shootsbury like that's a big change you know so um i just i just also want to kind of keep that in their mind but um but and I, I think that brings home you know dan's point about other districts other communities who fund the operating budget on school choice that's not the road we want to travel down, but there are opportunities, whether it's our intervention teacher this year, or, you know, maybe a second early childhood teacher, maybe there's um, intense professional development we couldn't afford otherwise around reading or math or literacy or student support um, that we could provide with school choice money, but it certainly wouldn't be the kind of professional development we want to ongoing and systemically, just like we wouldn't want to support ongoing staff members with the school choice money. So I think if we are mindful about 
the way we're going to use it, we can use it in a way that helps the town out, helps us out, but doesn't send us down that slippery slope of counting on it to fund our budget. So I agree with everything that everyone has said. I'm gonna say a little however, <laughs> not even however. Um, so I like win-wins and I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say something, uh, not completely thought out, but I appreciate the fact that we are a group that listens to each other and um, I'm not here to make a decision or we were not making any decisions tonight. Um, but I'm going to throw out a, a possibility or, or a, um, a, a, a perhaps for some for you to think about. So in my own mind, I do not want to in any way impact the budget. I don't want to use the school choice money to reduce the budget uh, because then we know what happens in the long run. But money is accumulating. So here's a perhaps that we look at the school choice money as the ability to, we have a certain amount of money and we're going to budget that money as contingency. Uh, so if, if two teachers ends up being $90,000 or $100,000 or $120,000, we want a contingency of $120,000. We also want a, so much money for other extracurricular things. So we want a school choice fund balance of 200,000, 300,000, whatever that number is. But again, I'm just throwing this as a, a hypothetical. When we get to a point where we have $300,000 in that school choice fund, and suddenly we have more kids in there, and now we're gone up to $320,000, maybe we give $20,000 to the town. We don't take it off our budget, but the town gets the money. Again, I'm just thinking outside the box. I don't want our budget to ever be impacted, but I also see where maybe we could do something where people realize that it's benefiting the town as a whole. And I'm just throwing that as one, one idea. Yes, Susie. The other piece of this, and that's why I feel we need a subcommittee on the finance committee to look at this, is that there's legislation. It has an intent. Like a lot of state laws, it may not accomplish its intent very well, but there are principles or, or concepts in there that the town the finance committee and other people really need to understand. Um, <clears throat> so clearly it was meant as an incentive um, and it was meant to make a school's program more attractive to both keep their students there and um, a school would be rewarded by having choice money come in if another school, if somebody sent their kid there. There is more ins and outs to this law than I understand yet. That's why I have to have a subcommittee but I don't think we need to work too far on this until we really do understand the pieces. Um, and I would imagine that there are some limits for how that money can be spent. And in my short reading of it, it did mention some limitations. So um, the, in terms of imposing on the school's uh, choice monies. So I feel like we're, we're pretty, um, maybe other people have a much better understanding of it. When I started hearing this, I was thinking, Okay, so who do I really ask about this? Um, every town is gonna and every district is gonna interpret this the way they best can and they inherit some interpretations. And I've been a town clerk and know that it can be all over the map how people interpret the same things. So I think it's, you know, it's gonna be a process to figure this out. Um, you know, I'll need to, we'll need to look at DESE and we'll need to find out maybe compare how some other regions do this. Um, we need to look at what Amherst is thinking it does with its region. So I feel like there's a lot of investigation and it, is, it does, need not, does not need to fall on you um, for the uh, sort of the underlying structure. But then in the end, to the best of my knowledge, you are totally in charge of that money. And so you can, when we get a coherent picture that we can present to people, um, it will be based on what the law says <laughs> and a few other things. Um, and then, and you'll, you'll come up with a plan. I don't doubt it. Um, 
but I feel it's too soon. I, I know that towns are supposed to be allocating in uh, additional revenue into their school budget. That's part of the rules, but it's not part of the school choice rules. So what a school's revenues are, I, I need to understand it in a really broad base before we start sort of noodling away at this. Well, I'm gonna speak a little bit of what I think that Bruce and Jennifer know a lot about school choice as well as Jackie. So I, I think that if there are questions that arise, there are um, agencies and resources, whether it be MASS, MASC for us to get that information. Um, and I think it's pretty clear how school choice funds work. I think it's really up to us on how we decide we want to use it. So I'm just going to put that out there. And then perhaps we can put this on the agenda for a little bit more discussion, um, just to see if we have any other thoughts. Is that okay? To put it back on the agenda, just to keep percolating on how this school choice, again, it, as you pointed out, Jackie, year after year, things will change. And so I don't want to impact the school budget, but I also want, you know, I want to win-win. <laughs> yeah, and I and I even just want to say now, I'm just going to put a bug in everybody's ear. We have extreme need in our preschool program next year, pretty significant, which means that, um, and we don't have programs <laughs> in our, we're not a, re a region that has programs specializing in certain needs. So it means that I'm going to probably be needing some more support in the building. And so like, this is what I'm talking about. This might be, maybe we need to use some school choice funds to be able to support that classroom um, instead of tapping into our general budget when the need could change. So um, that's, that's the type of stuff that I'm, I'm kind of talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Trevor, if you could just make a note that we'll try to have something on the agenda the next time just for further percolation and talk, okay? All right, Amherst Pelham report. All right, I'll try and be quick. Um, if anyone's interested, I can send them the superintendent's artifacts because they, um, I've got to do my report for Mr. Morris it's due on Tuesday, but if anyone wants to see his artifacts, I'm happy to send them. Gradu uh, graduation was last Thursday, and that went off very well. There was one little sheets spray hitch, but that was okay. Um, there, the sixth grade to the middle school talk is continuing, and Pelham claims that they've never talked about sending the sixth grade or keeping their sixth grade, which I find kind of funny. But anyway, that that will continue. And we should put that on our agenda sometime just to talk about it. And the last thing is the sad news that we lost a middle schooler to the blackout challenge yesterday. He, yeah, and I actually, I got to speak with Debbie Lee this afternoon because I got to visit the school twice today, tell Andy I was coming, then tell Andy I wasn't coming. But I let <laughs> I let Debbie Lee know that she's doing an awesome job, but also that she should get the word out that sixth, seventh, and eighth graders are once again on TikTok doing the blackout challenge. And the parents of this student want everyone to know that it happened and to be able to talk about it. Oh, that's horrible. That's tragic. Um, <clears throat> is the uh, information on the artifacts all sort of something compact that you can just forward to us anyhow? Or I is can. It you can have it. You can have it PDF, or you can have it in another way. I, I think I have it in three different ways. I'm good if you want to send me a PDF. I kind of like to peruse it. PDF works. Okay. It will be on its way in a little while. Thank you. Anything else? No? All right. Thank you, Stephen. All right, Union 28. 
Nothing, right? Nothing. I think there is a meeting, an executive session meeting next Tuesday? Next week there is, yep. Mm -hmm. There's a meeting next Tuesday, but nothing else new right. to share. Nothing to report. And then uh, a collaborative. Um, probably mentioned the last time we met, we did hire uh, Todd Gazda as the next uh, executive director. Um, <clears throat> process was great. And uh, the collaborative meets next week, next Wednesday. Uh, I also serve on a finance committee for the collaborative. And um, we were originally looking at a, I think a $1.5 million deficit, uh, which is closed into not too much of a deficit. <laughs> We're still working on it, but uh, it's been a crazy year there as well. Um, all right, so that's it for all the reports. Policy review. We have a vote to waive the school committee policy, BGB policy adoption for the purpose of editing policy EBCFA, base coverings in one vote. So do we have a motion? What, what's the motion to edit the existing? So before we can edit the existing face covering policy, because we have a policy Three. about how we create policies, we have to vote to waive our policy BGB, which is policy adoption for the purpose of editing policy EBCFA. So that would be the motion to sort of waive what we typically do. Right, so we don't have first reading and first vote, second vote, all that stuff. So I move to waive, was it BGB? Yes. I move to waive BGB. Second. Okay. So Bethany, do you understand what we're doing? We're basically waiving a policy in order to have a policy go into effect more immediately. Okay. So um, any discussion on that motion and second? All in favor? Aye. Okay, so that passed unanimously. So now we're looking to edit policy EBCFA. Yeah, so as I, I spoke a little bit earlier in my report, um, the commissioner shared sort of the guidance and recommendations from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and the Department of Public Health. Um, and we have a draft proposal for face coverings moving forward. And the draft, the wording in the draft proposal for folks who didn't get a chance to look at it, starting on July 1, 2021, the district will follow the face covering guidance from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health and the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. The superintendent will manage questions of interpretation and implementation of that guidance. And to note, it directly relates to a policy we did vote in, policy EBC-S, policy on COVID related issues, which authorizes a superintendent to suspend, revise or create protocols um, and to act expeditiously in executing um, our return to school plans in accordance with current law and regulations and where noted authorizes the superintendent to suspend, revise, or recommend policies, rules, and protocols. So this new draft language is really in line with current recommendations and also in line with um, policy EBC-S. Okay, we need a motion and a second. So I move to accept the edit. Is that a good way to say it? Yeah, that works. <laughs> yep. I'll second. Okay. Do we have any discussion or questions or concerns? Okay. So, all in favor? Okay. Any opposed? No, no abstention. So, passed unanimously, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you. And please note, of course, I would never make decisions in a vacuum. I do it in conjunction with the principal of all the schools, the leadership team, and would, of course, inform the school committee when anything changes. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. All yeah, right. Can I say something before we do teacher business? Mm -hmm. um, so I have a, a sixth grader uh, whose last day was today. And so today ends... Um, 
14 years of having children at Shutesbury Elementary for me. And uh, it was an emotional night last night for all of us as all my entire family looked around going, wow, we don't have a connection to this, you know, this place anymore. Um, but I just wanted to express my gratitude for a terrific experience for all three of my children. And um, while the year, this year has been really tough for my son, um, you know, he ended a year with a spaghetti dinner in the field and, um, you know, a movie night and a, a, a car parade and um, a, a, a beautiful graduation. So it was uh, well managed by everybody and, and much appreciated. So thank you very much. Thank you for sharing that. And can I just make a plug for the um, car parade to continue? It's such an amazing way to get the community, like, you know, connected to the school and to celebrate all the kids and all the, the work that's gone into the year. It's really sweet. <clears throat> yeah, it's really fun. And um, Pinebrook Camp let us use their um, parking lot, which was actually super helpful this year. Uh, it's a U, so we could easily line up. Um, and yeah, I think we'll continue it. It's hard that we didn't have that many viewers last night. So, but it's still fun for the, it's still really, really fun for the kids to decorate the cars. And I think everyone's bandwidth right now is just like so little. And I sent like a reminder text to everybody, but I think everyone's bandwidth is so little people made it out who could. Um, and maybe that will be better next year and, and maybe a more normal feeling year hopefully. But that's you, Jen, that's one of those things when I talk about what, what came, what good came out of COVID. I think those celebrations are good. Um, remote school committee meetings are, are good for the time being. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like the community connection. That's wonderful. Um, and another thing that came out of it, and I'm just bringing it up here, this is something good for you to know, um, I think in general, is also um, we ungendered our bathrooms this year by making grade level bathrooms. Um, and we're, we're gonna be continuing that as a school. Um, the community seems to really love it. Our older students advocated for me to continue to do this for the school, which I found to be super powerful. Um, and not only philosophically does it match with our staff and kind of our, our vision at Shootsbury, but it also <laughs> limits a lot of bathroom disruption and behavior uh, because one student at a time from each grade level uses the bathroom. So you don't get the, the meetups that happen and the bad decisions being made in the bathroom. Um, and so that is something, and luckily we have enough bathrooms where only one, two grades some might have to double up. But besides that, um, we have enough bathrooms to make it work, which is another thing we learned in COVID. So just putting that out there. Excellent. And staff, do they have their own bathrooms? Yeah, good. Yeah, there's two adult bathrooms. Good, excellent. Yeah, so see, some positive did come from it. Great. All right, no other policy stuff? We're good? All right. So future business, um, you can read it through. Uh, I will mention, of course, the Union 28 Joint Supervisory Committee meeting. It's an executive session to discuss uh, contract negotiations. And also, um, you know, if uh, I were to get um, the information from the Morse Hill School that uh, hopefully you'll all be willing to um, be flexible in uh, reconvening at some point, okay? All right. So um, was there anything else that people wanted to say? So I'd like to... Oh, oh. I just like, would like to share one thing. It has nothing to do with Shootsbury or Union 28. Um, but this year I got, um, and the principals have heard this um, when we're talking about graduating, I got an email from a counselor at one of our high school, our feeder high schools um, out of one of our Union 28 schools. And the counselor said, since the student had been a freshman, he had been talking about um, Dexter Park and his allies there. And that, um, 
his principal was the only person he ever felt comfortable with um, in all of his elementary school. And so another good that came from COVID was Google Meet. And she asked if I would surprise him with a Google Meet. So I got to see a student I had had from K to six become a 12th grade graduate. Um, so I just wanted to share, those are the joys. That's why we're here. That's why we do what we do because someday the kindergartner who used to shove himself in a locker <laughs> is gonna be the kindergarten, the 12th grader who graduates and sends you photos and has a Google Meet. So mm -hmm. it's been a year, it's been a year, but that is why we do what we do every single day. Very nice. Um, so I talked with Dan about this earlier and I shared most of this with the committee, but I, um, I'm just letting people know that I won't be able to continue. And after this meeting, we'll be sending my resignation to Dan and the town clerk about um, school committee, but I've just so appreciated being on this committee, especially in this last year and all the work that has gone into making this go well for the students and the families and the teachers. So um, thank you all so much. We thank will miss you. Yeah, and I did send uh, an email, hopefully everybody saw it. Um, just the appreciation for you and Katie for all of the work that you put in, uh, particularly this year with uh, the negotiations on the MOA and mm -hmm. contract negotiations. Um, it's a lot of work and uh, I'm really appreciative of all your time, energy, uh, commitment, it's great, so thank you. This has been an incredibly supportive school committee during the pandemic. So I, I think I can speak for Jackie from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for supporting us this year. Okay. Well, we appreciate all that you you have done. Your your entire team, from the administrative team to teachers, staff, and all of the support people. Um, it's been an amazing journey. So and it continues. So um if there is nothing else uh we will go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining uh and litigation oh corinne are you waving oh i was just gonna leave and i was just gonna say i just wanted to listen to your meeting because i have so much to learn about all of the things that you are all doing trying to run a mini thing so I'm just like blown away by what you all do and how you all do it so uh, yeah I was just gonna go but I just wanted to just I appreciate all the communication and thank you for letting me listen it, it teaches me a lot you can come anytime we, I, have, I a blast. To. <laughs> we have a blast we're a fun group thank you all though have a good thank night you. um and then we will come back into open public session to vote into the public um and Trevor, uh, if you want, uh, we can take those minutes so you don't have to wait around and um, we'll forward them to Pam, okay? Do you want me to take that? Question? I'm sorry, we'll, yes, and we'll invite both, uh, or all Jackie, Jennifer, and Bruce uh, into our executive session. Sure, someone just needs to send me a link. Okay, um, Bruce, do you have that link? Oh, you're on mute. Or Jennifer, do you have it too? I got it. We're all okay. set. Okay. You need, to, you need to vote to enter yep. executive So we're going to go in, into executive session for the strategy with respect to collective bargaining coming back into open public session. Uh, we need a roll call vote out. We need a second first. Okay. Okay. So Hayes, I. Malcolm Brown, I. Thomas Paquin, I. Sullivan, I. And then Bethany. Bethany, I. Okay, and do you have the link where we're meeting up? No. Okay. Bruce, can you get that? I have, she, I don't know if she has a Shootsbury email address yet, but I have her personal email address, so I can send it to her from the one Bruce sends me. Do you okay. have it, Jackie? <clears throat> send it. No, I I was never on the. I'm not usually invited unless asked. Okay. But I'll I will forward it to Bethany when I get it. Okay, let's make sure we can forward it first. <laughs> I've got it. I'm forwarding it now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.
And uh, okay, so um, go ahead, Lauren. Where is it? Because I'm looking for it and I. Pam just sent it out this afternoon, so. Okay. It was at, probably after okay. like five o'clock or something. Yep. Maybe? I have it. I do have it. I see it now. Thanks. Okay. I still don't have it. You just sent it. You should should be coming. Okay. Okay. Yep. Got it. Okay. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to get on there myself. So let's see. You let me make sure I don't have to let you. <laughs> oh, where'd it go? What's that? Are you ringing? Oh. Bethany, I just sent it to you. Oh. Bruce, you're the host, correct? Yep. Right. And I'm gonna get it. I gotta get out of my Zoom meeting. And I'm gonna do this by phone, so we'll see you shortly. Bye everyone. Yes. Good night. You can hear me, right? You can't see me, can you? Yep. You can see me? No, I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. So um, we should have the contract in front of us. I think. Uh, Bruce, is there anything you want to say to it? Or Jen, I think everything is in there, but uh, who wants to speak to it? Jen, do you want to say anything? Or or she can't probably hear what I'm saying. Right. So um, other than that, I think really the only big things to think about is year one, it'll be a 1.5%. Uh, what's it? Okay, that's for the office aid. Uh, hold on. So office aid is a 1.5% for years one, two, and three. Uh, teachers, 2% in year one, one and a half percent with an additional 0.5% of the top step. step. And then year three is one and a half across the board. That seems to be, uh, I think, the bigger things, correct? And longevity may be a little bit of an issue uh, or a little bit of a change there. Are we all good with the contract or is there any concerns, questions, thoughts? Maybe just acknowledgement that you heard me. <laughs> Okay. okay, I'm sorry. I'm on the phone, so I can't see anyone. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right.
find um, to try to guide our thinking about that too. Okay, and how were the other colas in comparison? Are they similar? Okay, so are we all ready to come back into the open public meeting and vote on this? Okay, all right, so let's move back into open public meeting. We'll roll call vote out, Hayes aye. Council Brown aye. So we'll see you all in the other meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we got you back. So we're, <laughs> we're making progress here. And Bethany's here. Oh, right. Jen, here we go. They're rolling in. Okay. All right, so that's letting Stephen, and we're waiting for Lauren. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, two, and maybe Jackie's not coming back, but that's okay. All right, so we'll continue to move forward. Um, do we have a motion uh, to approve the Shootsbury School Committee and the Shootsbury Elementary Educator and Shootsbury Affiliated Workers Agreement? So moved. Okay. And a second? Second, second. Okay. Um, any further discussion before we vote? Okay, I think we're ready to vote. Um, we'll do a roll call vote on this, uh, just because this is important. Um, so we have a motion and a second and a roll call vote. I'll say Hayes aye. Malcolm Brown, aye. Thomas Pickman, aye. Oh. Rose, aye. Okay, we got them both. All right. Um, I will uh, forward the minutes from this part of the meeting over to Pam. And uh, I will just say thank you all very much. Uh, I appreciate everyone's <clears throat> help and support, uh, including tonight. I didn't know sort of how things were going to unfold. Um, I think to me, uh, one of the most important parts of being a school committee member is process. And I think when you have a good process, you have a good outcome. And uh, I am hopeful that uh, the process continues uh, to be cooperative and helpful uh, and friendly and, um, and that we can achieve a goal of um, reaching some sort of conclusion with more cell school. So, um, but I do think that it, it is important to continue to just make sure that we have a good process and, and the process is outlined. And I think we're all sort of on the same track now and we're, we're making progress. So thank you all very much. If there's nothing else. Pam, yeah. so, you, so you know the um, memorandum of agreement is I dropped off a town hall and it's there for you to sign. Okay, the contract? The settlement agreement? The settlement agreement, yep. Okay. All right, thank you for dropping that off. I appreciate it. And again, I really appreciate everybody's patience through all of this. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I'll say this meeting is adjourned. Have a nice evening, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Good night. Good night. everybody. Bye, Jen. Jen. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. So good to be with you. Thank and you. welcome, Bethany. Yes, Thank welcome. you. Welcome, Bethany. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.